join in. I have a fantastic guest this evening. But before I begin talking with our guests, I just want to update people on some of the things that are going on in um, the world of college admission. As we know, with this pandemic, it has turned everything topsy-turvy. So right now, what's going on with uh, high school seniors is that they are, as of, for many schools, as of this Friday, May 1st, students will have to make their final decision for their schools. There are some colleges and universities that have that decision date to June 1st. So seniors, I definitely encourage you to check with your college, look on their website, look on their social media, their Twitter page, their Instagram page, their Facebook page, and see if they have a decision day of May 1st or of June 1st. There's so many have moved to that. So that's for high school seniors. For those of you that are underclassmen in high school, I suggest that you just keep doing what you're doing. I know many of you are trying to transition to online learning, and that has its challenges in itself. So do the best you can. And please, one of the things I want all of you to do is to take some time to take care of yourself. So that means just going outside in the backyard, or walking around the block, or meditating, or, or finding an exercise class online, or my favorite thing, reading. Um, do something that's just for you that has nothing to do with school um, and, you know, practice some self-care. So I definitely encourage folks to do that. And that also goes for the adults. You know, we're all, we're all Zooming and I don't know about you, but I get a little Zoomed out some days. So, so take time away from the screen and just, just do something that's just getting outside you know, listening to the birds, wherever you happen to be, just get outside and enjoy nature a little bit. And hopefully that will be something that will help you cope with this because we're all in this together. So we're all doing the best that we can. So let me just check and see if we have, I haven't seen anybody join in yet. Uh, let's see. Checking, checking, checking. Okay. We've got a couple of people that have joined in. When you join in, Please say hello, say something, say your name, say where you're from, but say something. Don't just be out there lurking, lurking in the background. So we'd love to hear from you. So please, folks, make sure, you know, you check in and, and share this out with other people to make sure that they have an opportunity to hear from our wonderful guests. Um, so I appreciate everyone doing that for me. Um, so we've got about three people on now. So again, make sure, you know, I'm looking for your comments in the comment box. I'm looking for your name. Don't see anything up there yet, but we'll get started. And then you can pop in some questions that, as we go along. So Mario, I'm going to have you come on camera now. Unmute yourself. Hey, how's it going, Dr. B? It is going so well. Mario, first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to be my guest. Absolutely. One of the things I'm trying to do, um, just a little different because we're always talking about COVID-19 and I think right. every thing that people see, it's about that. So I'm doing a little pivot here. I want mm -hmm. folks to start, students to start thinking about their career pathways and what the possibilities mm -hmm. are. So I'm hoping every week um, to bring a different career. Yeah. Someone to talk about whether they're on their way to that career or whether they're in the career, just to have those conversations. So Mario B, so you want to be a lawyer. <laughs> yes, yes. It's been a long road to kind of getting on track. Um, but I think that's kind of the interesting thing that I kind of had confirmed for me when I got to law school. I mean, it's not just a bunch of 22-year-olds that are just kind of getting out of undergrad. Um, you know, there's folks uh, in their 30s, and their 40s, people have their second career and therefore they're in their 50s. Um, they finally had an opportunity to kind of um, get to that JD and they're doing it for different reasons. Um, I think traditionally a lot of people looked at it as just um, these are kind of going off of things I've read when I was still like searching was like this is the um, way the, the key to the middle class like you know you can just become an attorney and that's just how it's going to be but I think um, nowadays I think the only difference is and a lot of people say oh there's too many attorneys there's so much uh, saturation in that market but it's it's freeing in a lot of ways too because um, you can choose to sort of take your own path and if there's a, a particular area of law that you dedicate to a particular social issue. I think that's been the most interesting thing. 
Uh, and I think that's one thing that separates my law school, I think, probably from other ones is that a lot of the folks there are there for like very personal and passionate reasons. Um, okay. And so I'm sure there's plenty of uh, you know, you know, your students that have those personal reasons as well. Oh, yeah. So, Mario, tell us, how, what got you interested in law? But before you even go to there, yeah. tell us about your undergraduate work. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a long story. Um, yeah, I, uh, went to, uh, E. Smith high school in Cumberland County. Um, and you know, from there I was able to get to uh, UNC Chapel Hill in the 2008. Um, so, you know, I'm one of those super duper duper seniors, uh, it took me a little while longer to kind of, um, get that undergraduate degree. Um, but you know, I worked a lot, um, and I was able to kind of, um, really sort of round out, you know, my professional and academic experience over that time. So I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade that um, sort of those years in Chapel Hill for the world. Um, so Peace War and Defense uh, and Communications were the two degrees I left with uh, in 2018. And then I, um, you know, took that year, uh, got to know Dr. B uh, working in downtown Fayetteville. Um, and, you know, a lot of things were happening in the world around 2016, 2017 that really kind of reminded me that, you know, hey, this was always something you were passionate about. Um, I did this speech and debate thing in high school. Uh, in undergrad, I competed in mock trials. So we traveled and kind of had these competitions. Um, so I was always kind of holding on to uh, a career as an attorney, uh, you know, for many reasons. But um, I think the, the first one was just um, being potentially becoming the guy that when you're in a situation, whatever it is, right or wrong, really, um, you can pick up that phone and say, you know what, I'm calling my lawyer. <laughs> and I've just always had a thing about wanting to be that guy uh, on the other side of the line. And and you kind of, you know, can kind of uh, feel secure after that. Like, okay, you know what, I've got my advocate who's going to who's gonna help me out. Um, so I think that's kind of where it came from. Um, and then again, we see so many things going on in the world where, you know, we see the attorneys kind of stepping up uh, and, and making an impact. So I kind of, you know, found those reasons um, that kind of, you know, lit the fire back in me. Um, to, to take the LSAT and then and begin that whole process. Okay. So we got a comment here from Jay. She said she remembers you from when she worked at Goldsmith and Goldsmith. Of course. Yeah. And we're all in that building down at 100 Hay Street in downtown yeah. Fayetteville. <laughs> Absolutely. Shout out to uh, our, our beautiful yeah. uh, self-help yeah. building there. Uh, yeah. yeah. I love the downtown family. That, that, that year when I got back in 2018, I mean, I just felt like even though it was just a year that I was kind of really, really back home, it felt like, you know, a long time in a beautiful way. Like, I mean, it was so great to get to know so many people so quickly. Yeah, it seemed like it was longer than a year. I know, I know, yeah. Because um, fall 2019 was when classes started. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. That's true. So, Mario, tell me about some of the, because one of the things I, I definitely know about you when you were in Fayetteville is how connected you were with the community. Mm -hmm. So how do you think that community work that you were doing um, help inform your your decision and the work that you're doing and learning about at law school? Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, and I'm sure you have these conversations with your undergraduate students. Like it's one thing to say, okay, I'm in high school and I'm supposed to go to college. And then I'm supposed to, you know, you don't want to just go through the steps um, to get to the end. You have to have a reason. And it, it's really, you know, your why that's going to kind of keep you sustained in those tough times. So if you don't have that, or rather, not that you don't have it, because it takes time to find it for sure. Um, but the kind of community work I was getting involved in definitely helped me narrow and zero in on my why. Um, and so if it was truly, you know, do I, am I just saying this? Am I just thinking this is a good idea? Um, let me get involved and, and, and get connected and, and go to these occasions, go to these events. And um, maybe I'll prove that it is. And, and in my case, um, I definitely felt like, you know, our community in Fayetteville, um, we have so many young people trying to do so many things, um, so many great things. I have so many entrepreneurs like yourself that are working really hard to make to, to take tables to the next level. Um, and so just for my talents, for what I'm good at, you know, I love being, you know, that cheerleader for people and kind of helping kind of usher in and resource and kind of and, and having a JD for me uh, was going to be that toolkit, you know, that I was going to be my Swiss Army knife to be able to kind of. Um, get folks to that next place. If we got to take it all the way to the courtroom, we can do that too. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, a lot of the community involvement just kind of helped me find that why. And that definitely makes a lot of decision making, again, whether it's college, um, you know, majors or what kind of law you want to practice. It definitely informs those kinds of um, decisions that eventually everyone has to make. Uh, but maybe you can make them with more confidence. Okay. So, what was, so after that time off from school, what was it like returning to school? 
school as a first year law student? Yeah, I mean, it was a good year uh, in between. Um, so kind of, you know, and, and I think this is true with even um, the transition from high school to, uh, to college. I mean, you, you, you learn how to learn high school, but learning how to learn for college is definitely its own kind of um, learning curve that you have to kind of accomplish. So um, the format of law school, the way that, you know, there's no homework, you know, there's no weekly sort of, you know, uh, assessments of how well you're doing. You got a midterm, you got a final. Um, if you've got a really sweet professor, you know, she might give you a, um, sort of like a before your midterm kind of pre midterm. Uh, but for the most part, you know, 80% of your grade is your final exam or if not more. Um, so you have to kind of, um, stay on it. Like you can't just, okay, I'm going to cram at the end or you can't cram a sem a, an entire semester's worth of material. Um, like you would, again, if you were kind of being tested every other week. Right. Um, to kind of benchmark and checkpoint yourself over time. There is no checkpoint. There is the middle and then there's the end. Okay. Um, so just kind of always staying on task, uh, even if you have to make up your own benchmarks. Okay. So out of, so what was your, what is, what has been your most challenging class so far? Oof. I mean, it depends on the, on the day, I feel like, I mean, it, or on the topic that we go to. Um, the interesting thing about law school is that no matter what law school you go to, whether, you know, um, you're going to the highest of the highest, the Ivy Leagues, um, or, you know, uh, local schools in your state, your first year is very prescribed. Um, everyone takes contracts, everyone takes civil procedure, everyone takes criminal law torts uh, and property law. Uh, and then, of course, some ver version of legal writing. Um, but it's, it's very prescribed in that way. And, um, you know, everyone kind of has their own strengths and weaknesses. And um, I think mine, for me, for whatever reason, property law. There's something about property law. And, uh, you know, these interstate secessions and, you know, who gets what if you have a half brother and then a son and the trust in the will. And then, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Some of that kind of it, it turns into like a math class, I swear. Um, so I think property has been the, the tougher one <laughs> for me personally. But, um, you know, I think they're all achievable. They're all they're all doable. It's, it's a matter of putting the time in. And obviously, if you struggle with one, then you got to front load that a little more. Um, and most schools have really. Um, strong like support um you know sort of like uh, academic um i'm forgetting the term offhand but um you had, there's entire offices uh, at my law school and i think it's true for other law schools that are dedicated to sort of being um kind of like almost like on-site tutors like you know you go there and then you get maybe more help on how to better study for this class and so there, there's usually um resources like in college will have the, the writing center you know these are just kind of on on campus resources and that's true for law school too so uh, it's always important to kind of know, you know, all the things that your school offers or else, you know, you could have been helped and, you, you know, uh, you could have done a lot better if you knew. Right. And you end up missing out on that help. Absolutely. My alarm's going off my diabetic cat's insulin. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but, but that's okay. So we have another comment here. Um, Jay is saying that her daughter is a yeah. freshman at A and t and she's majoring in pre-law. Awesome. She, she plans to attend Howard or um, North Carolina Central Law there School. There you go. What advice would you give her as an undergrad? She wants to be a civil rights attorney. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I mean, I think um, I love that she already kind of has an idea. And then certainly you allow yourself once you're in school to kind of be, um, you know, uh, sort of in, in, impressed upon. And maybe you can take it. You take a different route at a certain point. Um, but I do like that she already has an idea. Um, so that she can kind of, um, you know, not just choosing her classes, but it, it, it'll kind of, you know, even when she's they worry about property, oh my gosh, you know, there's, there's nothing to do with civil rights, but you kind of remind yourself that that's what's important. But as an undergraduate, I think the main thing to keep in mind um, is those grades. There's just no supplement. That's kind of like step one. Um, and um, you can't, you, there's no substitute for that GPA at the end of the day. Um, certainly, you know, your LSAT matters and things like that, but that's something you can learn, but it's depending on, and she said freshman, so that's good. Freshman is perfect. You've got plenty of time to not forget that you want to be an attorney you want to go to law school. Um, and I mean, so many opportunities open up, um, like you'll, she'll have to pick up, pick up the litter, uh, full ride scholarships, you know, all these things become uh, open to you. Um, if, and when you kind of, um, don't let yourself, uh, lose out on sort of the, the, the tent poles, you know, um, for me, um, because I had such a uh, sort of roller coaster of an undergrad, um, I had to kind of um, overcompensate my LSAT score um, to kind of make up for a more, you know, rockier GPA. 
Um, and, you know, that kind of, um, I don't say stress, but certainly, you know, we all want to feel good about who we're applying to. We want to um, put the best uh, sort of materials out as our, for our candidacy. Um, but I was having to, again, kind of, but did you know that I did this in, in, with the city of Fable? Did you know that I, you know, I kind of had to bring out more of those softs, which are great and they're important. Um, but those are all things that, you know, if we're talking about, you know, packing the suitcase, you know, that, that you want to put the big things in first and that's, that's GPA. Um, and obviously if you're not worried about your GPA come your junior or senior, you have more time to worry about your LSAT. Um, and so those two things, again, there's just no substitute for them. Um, um, so just being very conscious at all times that, you know, whether it's that party or whether I'll turn that in later or, you know, I don't, I can get a, I can get a B, I can get a C. But yeah, there you go. Exactly right. Exactly right. I don't want to hear C's get degrees. I don't want to hear, you know, like <laughs> it might be true, but you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to make it that much tougher in the long run. Okay. What would you recommend for her? So she's an undergrad now in, in college. What would you recommend for her as far as? Uh, types of activities outside of the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, depending on the clubs and things that they have, I mean, you know, I think what you really want to demonstrate no matter what you are doing is just um, where law schools want to know that you have, like what you're bringing to their school. You know, they, they want to they uh, um, sort of put together a interesting class. So maybe you don't necessarily have to do this. Like, you know, she doesn't have to do political science. She doesn't have to do, you know, sort of a strict, you know, what you would expect um, is the most, you know, I think, you know, sometimes when students um, can speak to more of their passions and some of the things that they're interested in, uh, if she wants to do mock trial, great. If she doesn't, I wouldn't necessarily force um, the student to do mock trial per se. Um, you know, anything that she's able to kind of demonstrate um, how she was able to kind of like excel, you know, obviously you want to be, you know, they want obviously the people who are doing really well in whatever it is that they do. Um, so certainly taking everything you do very seriously and showing, you know, obviously if you're able to get into a leadership position with it, you know, all of those things are very important. Um, but it's not as uh, prescribed, I don't think, when it comes to, uh, you know, it's nice to have a very unique, you know, show your character, show who you are, because um, otherwise you're going to look, you're going to sound just like the other uh, you know, hundred, you know, people who did the same things, you know, uh, it's, it'd be really interesting maybe to kind of hit them with a curveball. Okay. Now I haven't worked with anyone that's gone through the, um, applying to law school. Sure. So, so tell me what the pieces of the law school application are and, and, and the, um, how, how law school, what, what do they focus on the most? You, you already talked about LSAT. Mm -hmm. What else composes the, um, law school application. Absolutely. So, you know, after, you know, you get to that point, you know, it's getting to be that, that time of year where, um, you know, your junior year or so. I think one of the other things that um, Jay, for example, can think about while she's um, in undergrad is who is that professor who's going to write that recommendation letter? That's really going to speak to what, uh, you know, standout student you were. Um, and then kind of just cultivating that relationship over time. Um, one of the mandatory things, again, is uh, a um, an in, uh, excuse me, a recommendation letter specifically from a professor that you've had. So always keep that in mind. Um, you know, you can't just get, um, you know, the, um, for example, they say this all the time, uh, don't necessarily go for, um, oh, my family has a friend who's a prominent attorney, he's gonna write me something, but he doesn't know you. Um, and so he might have a name and, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily work like you think it works. Um, the, the professor that you took one or two classes with or more, uh, that you did some um, independent research with, you know, they're going to be able to really say that she is a, you know, a heck of a writer. She knows, you know, how to think critically about these issues. Um, so I think thinking about, you know, that's what you have to plan ahead of time. You can, you know, don't, don't wait till last semester and then you're trying to find a friend. <laughs> um, so, you know, those recommendation letters matter. Um, usually they want at least two. Um, sometimes they allow you to do a third. Um, but, you know, definitely one from an um, instructor is required. And then, of course, the other one can be something else, maybe in your community work or in your extracurricular work. Um, obviously, the LSAT is the other, you know, humongous thing that, you know, everyone has to have. Um, and then in a lot of ways, you know, along with your GPA, um, I would even say it's probably, um, you know, if, you, if I were to put a percentage on it, maybe like 60, 40, um, if not 55, you know, percent, it is a little, way, a little higher weighted on the LSAT because that supposedly is how they determine how successful you're going to be in law school. So, I mean, I love a hey, be legal, legal. I mean, there's plenty of reasons, um, you know, very specifically to think about, uh, you know, you want to be in North Carolina, let's, let's, let's um, go to a North Carolina school, um, civil rights law. We you know we've got plenty of issues we can handle here. So I wouldn't necessarily say discount that, but at the same time, just for anyone who's thinking about law school, 
if you're thinking about, you know, working in New York or work, working in those big cities uh, and doing what they call that big law, I mean, all that is really the, the road to getting into those kinds of schools starts with that, that LSAT score. So you've got one between 120 and 180 um, is that range. Um, and so once you're closer to those, you know, 170s, you know, um, you know, uh, the one six, the high one sixties. I mean, those are the scores that, you know, all of a sudden you have a pick of the litter. Um, so, you know, those are things that, you know, uh, there's, there's, you can't discount, uh, obviously, you know, um, other than just kind of your resumes, you know, you that, that's a classic, you know, you gotta have that resume, uh, it's gotta look good. There's, there can't be any sort of, you know, obvious egregious errors on that. And I know that Dr. B, that's something you <laughs> drill with your students that so you gotta have one. There's no, there. absolutely. Um, and then speaking of proofreading, um, these essays, um, you know, they generally always require a kind of personal statement. Um, some will have uh, a little bit of prompting, you know, they might say, you know, something about, you know, speak specifically to um, the most, you know, significant moment in your academic education. But again, you know, that, that is a stand in for your uh, personal statement. Um, and then, of course, you know, they might have something that's like, why do you want to choose our school specifically? Um, and there's a lot of reasons for why they have that essay, but, um, you know, you, we've seen those rankings and a lot of those uh, schools, they don't want to offer um, uh, letters to folks that are going to not end up going there. Um, so they want to know, do you really want to come here or are we just another kind of, you know, application? So these are all things to think about probably way down the road. But I think the main thing is that you've got those essays, obviously you got your test scores and your uh, LSAT scores um, and, of course, your recommendation letters. Um, resumes, and then all of that is really centralized on LSAC. That's the Law School Admissions Council website. So everything just gets funneled right through there. Um, and the only other little um, thing I'll keep in mind is cost. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, you know, like costs here and there. Obviously, you can um, register for, um, you know, these, these applications are 80 bucks um, for the most part a piece. So you know, um, taking the LSAT obviously costs, you know, a hundred some odd dollars, uh, whether or not you do a prep course. Um, they also require you to pay for, uh, a, there, there's just a little, there's a lot of little costs sometimes that come up that you'll be like, okay, that's another 80 bucks. That's another hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yes. And sometimes you can get around those, you know, as far as like, they'll ask, you know, um, for your like financial stuff, just like, just like FAFSA, you know, there, there, there's potential for you to kind of have those fees waived. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, and I don't want to lose Jay. I think she asked about the internships. I'm sorry. Yes, um, <laughs> I'm kind of like talking about everything else. If so, when? Uh, yeah. So I think um, when internships, I did one personally um, before I went to, um, before I went in, like, I definitely, um, yeah, I guess it was uh, in order to apply. So uh, it just, it just lasted pretty long. It lasted all the way up until I went to school. Um, shout out to uh, Ms. Sherry Miller. Um, and Mr. Lekainen, um, Miller and Lekainen downtown Fayetteville, again, this downtown, yeah. uh, you know, club there, we, we definitely look out for each other. Um, so the law offices of Miller and uh, Lekainen, um, was the law firm that I interned at. So that would be my recommendation, uh, internship wise, um, for, uh, Jay, your daughter. I think that, um, getting into a, um, law firm, um, and, you know, I think, I think depending on, um, who it is, you know, they might, it will kind of vary what you're able to do, certainly. Uh, but just exposure to just the environment, um, because, you know, it's definitely different from law school, but let's be honest, that's what you're eventually going to be kind of working on. Let's see if that's the kind of the working lifestyle that you're interested in uh, or not. So there, there's, there's no, I think that's probably the best one, the most solid one. Uh, but any sort of internship, I think that uh, allows you to kind of demonstrate, um, you know, just your, your work ethic, you know, your, the fact that um, at the end of the day, the law school wants to know, are you going to succeed here? You know, we don't want no dropouts. We don't want everybody messing up our, you know, um, our bar uh, passage rates, you know. Um, so they're, they're, that's what ultimately you can always kind of um, think in terms of that. Is this ultimately going to um, prove to this university or to this law school that I'm going to succeed here? Um, so that, and that can mean a lot of different things is how you demonstrate that. And that's so similar when kids are applying to and Dr. B, I'm really very sorry. Um, I, I think I might, I'm not going to be able to hear you right now. Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if it's uh, just a me thing or... Okay. We, we were having a... Not a everyone thing. Yeah, we were having a little bit of technical difficulty before. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll mess with you on here. <laughs> Let's see.
Let's see. So Jay is asking about study guides. So I will send that to you. Okay. Yeah. We we can, let's let's use the chat feature. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I can't hear you exactly right now, Doctor B. But if um you know if you want to message me the questions, if yeah, you're still I hear me, I continue to yeah, perfect. Yeah. So and I and I have it pulled up, so I can definitely see. Uh, you said study guides. Um. So yeah. Uh, I think that um, when it, and if we're talking study guides, I'll probably have to clarify whether we're talking LSAT study guides, like when it comes time um, to, to study specifically for the test. Okay, so that is a several thousand dollar question. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, there's the sort of um, the Kaplan's. Um, that's that's the one I ended up particularly taking myself. And, I, and again, they're probably you're probably familiar with these, um, you know, uh, to Jay and to other folks, you know, the same. They probably do SAT and, and other other prep classes, too. So they might be somewhat familiar. Um, so Kaplan's the one that I did. Um, and I think there's other kind of like name brand um, programs. And for me, that was um, more for uh, the structure. You know, it, it was almost it was structured like a classroom. Like I went, um, uh, well, I want to say once a week um and i had a, a two and a half hour three hour course uh, with an instructor um you know and we went over the stuff and of course the instructors are always like you know graduates from you know great schools and um you know did great on the lsat obviously um and so you have that classroom setting and obviously you have homework um but that's you know it can be pricey we're talking you know to a couple thousand dollars uh for these courses and they provide you with a little bit of everything uh in the sense that like with that package i'll just speak to the package i feel like i'm giving a kaplan um <laughs> advertisement here but um I, that i'm not i'm not, i'm also not saying that's not possible to to self-study that's always that's also uh, very viable it's, it's more about what you know you as a student uh, or a parent know that your student is likely to succeed with um, you know, if you're, if you're, you're a self studier and that's something that you know that you can do, um, do it. Um, if uh, you think that structure is necessary, that aid is out there. Heck, you can go even to the, the, the real Cadillac diamond version, and get private tutors um, to, to work with you. So there's a lot of options, but I think the rule of thumb, no matter what, is practice LSATs. So again, with Kaplan, they'll give you access to every LSAT that has ever existed so that you can, again, practice and then literally take a test under time conditions uh, and then see your score. Um, and that is the ultimate you know, indicator of how well you're going to do, obviously, come test day. Um, so I would recommend, you know, if, as you're shopping, as you're doing anything, if you decide that, hey, I want to maybe just try out just self-studying um, or maybe I am just going to self-study, the rule of thumb is just take as many um, practice LSATs as you can. Um, and that'll be, I think, the, the most lucrative or most bang for your buck or that, that, that'll be the most, um, you know, uh, I was just thinking, I thought so you were already type. Um, that'll be the thing that you really get results from. Um, am I planning to specialize in a particular field of law? Uh, you know, I'm still kind of open uh, to some extent. You know, I think for me, uh, I ended up deciding the difference is my nine to five, what I sort of have to clock in and clock out and do. I'm open to a little bit of everything. Uh, I certainly have a heart for, you know, just because my family came here from another country. Uh, I'm a first generation American. Um, one of the things that happened sort of to remind me to kind of rebuild my fire was hearing the story about things like, you know, the travel ban that happened in 2016. And you heard about all these attorneys who just dropped everything, went to their nearest airport and just started helping people. Um, so being able to kind of do things like that, I think is what speaks most to me like the most life giving thing. Um, so I always want to be able to kind of work and do those kinds of things. Um, but if I have to do tax law, <laughs> you know, <laughs> from nine to five and I have to, and then I can go be Batman at night, you know, then, 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 you know, I, those are things I'm personally open to, um, you know, and, and again, I'm kind of allowing for this year and the next two years to kind of draw me again, potentially to, um, a more, um, any any particular kind of law but nothing that i end up sort of doing is going to take me away i think from what i intend to kind of use my access or my jd for my license to practice law um but to really help people that i know um or you know that i, I come upon that need that direct assistance and i can make that direct impact so that's what i always kind of intend to do um, but we'll see we'll see so tbd uh in short <laughs> okay placing up another question During law school, are there opportunities for internships? Absolutely. Um, it's actually kind of 
required. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's very dependent actually uh, on it's, it's, this can be actually a kind of a stressful thing. It's something to think about. It's, there's my other, my fellow law students will like watch this and kind of like, you know, like, you know, really feel like, yeah, this is, this is the, this is part of the struggle. Um, how well you do your first semester kind of um, gives you the answer with the type of summer internship in your first year that you'll be able to kind of get, you know, um, you're applying, you're competing with other law students. And obviously these law firms or these, um, you know, wherever you're applying to, they want the best and the brightest. Um, so, you know, there's really no um, kind of like, um, you, you, you hit the ground running. Like I said, that first semester, that's what determines what you can do for, your, for that first summer. Uh, and again, um, this is all to eventually when you graduate, you know, the, the, your employer, your future employers are going to ask you, so what did you do your first uh, year of summer internship? Uh, and again, going uh, back to the beginning, depending on what you do your first summer is what you're going to do your second summer, you know, because if you didn't get a good one, then, you know, again, it kind of just builds on itself. Um, so yeah, first year internship, a second year internship, those are very crucial um, because again, they inform your ultimate employer um, what kind of candidate uh, you are and how competitive you'll be against um, other law students that are probably buying for that job. Um, the schools will also have uh, what we call clinics. Um, so, you know, the um, Bar Association, the North Carolina Bar allows for third year students to essentially practice uh, as long as it's obviously under very specific conditions. You have these uh, prerequisite classes, you have this kind of GPA and you're working under this attorney at the school. Um, and then so folks who maybe can't afford um, services will go to law schools. Uh, and certain law schools afford, um, you know, certain assistance with whether it's, um, you know, housing related issues, whether it's juvenile related issues. I mean, there's a, we, we do tax. I think one, it's one of the bigger ones that we do at our school. Um, but um, yeah, essentially we as students, almost like um, the way medical students will have like, clin you know, like their clinics, you know, where, where, they, where they'll sort of practice, um, we'll do the same thing. We literally get a caseload, we'll go to the office, you know, for that class and we'll, we'll interview clients and we'll essentially you know, be practicing uh, with all, for all intents and purposes. So yeah, you do your own thing on the summertime. It's pretty much a requirement, <laughs> you know, when it comes to being a competitive uh, candidate for eventual employment uh, and there's opportunities for clinics. So. Jay and, and uh, your daughter and then all these other law students, you're going to get plenty of practice. You're going you're gonna to have a pretty good idea of what you like and what you don't like before the end of law school. That's for sure. Um, internships are great. Um, are great networking. They are. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, that, that's, that's one thing that, uh, and, and maybe this is another little shout out to Hannah, uh, our fearless leader at Revco. Um, she kind of uh, tongue in cheek said uh, when I was telling her I was going to be going to law school uh, that Okay, yeah, classes do good in your classes, but law school's all about networking. <laughs> like, I mean, she went out of her way to like say, like, you know, hey, this is that's it's not like a, it's almost like a fifty-fifty thing is the way she was putting it. Uh, and and I totally get her point. Um, you know, your first year, you're definitely um, making really strong bonds with your classmates and your study groups, just kind of you know going through this boot camp of sorts together. Uh, and yeah, these are absolutely your professional colleagues one day. Um, so it's really important just to kind of keep that in mind. I mean, we also, we all have like this, um, you know, professional integrity that we want to maintain. Uh, and we always think about, um, as we're kind of growing as professionals in, in this, in this, uh, in this field. So it's, it's a huge, uh, factor or a huge component of being a law student is, you know, recognizing again, um, how we're going to eventually one day help each other, um, in this legal field. You know, we can't be the expert in every law. <laughs> and if we've got to refer a client, hey, I know my best friend, they've been, they've been good at property labor. They helped me get out of that class. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to send it to them. They've been good since the beginning in that, in that little area of law. Uh, and then vice versa, you know, you'll be getting um, your opportunities, um, certainly with upperclassmen, certainly um, alumni network. And this is obviously my biggest plug for um, North Carolina Central School of Law. Um, you know, our judges in Cumberland County, our prominent attorneys, our elected officials, we're all legal eagles. Uh, is that what it says here? What type of advice? Oh my God, there you go. Um, so much, so much. I mean, that has absolutely been um, the, the exact reason why I wanted to go to Central School, uh, North Carolina Central School of Law is because our, our reach, our legacy, our um, reputation, just as like, we are not just, you know, behind the desk, you know, just scribbling in our papers, sort of attorneys, you know, we're the ones who, yeah, we, we get the job done in the courtroom, but we care about our communities. We're out here seeing, and now what else can we do? And now how else do we get involved? Right. And that's the kind of, you know, uh, school I want to be associated with, or the kind of, you know, um, community that I want to be associated with, uh, legal community to be associated with. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could give shout outs all day. Um, just, you know, when it comes to my journey to this point, um, 
you know, I always tell the funny story about um, our district court judge, uh, Tony King, who, when I was a wee little kid, uh, she was my Sunday school teacher, like at, at the Korean Presbyterian Church. And, you know, I always kind of, you know, kept in touch. Uh, we always kept in touch. She keeps in touch with all of her children, all of her kids. You know, there's all of us who were her kids back then. Uh, but I went to her office and she, you know, sat down with me and she said, Mario, you know, what are you really trying to do? You know, and I was, I was lamenting, like, should I go this year? I want to stay in Fayetteville. Oh, my God. You know, I don't want to go. Um, you know, should I wait a year? Um, but, you know, she gave me that kind of advice. Um, uh, Commissioner Adams, um, Commissioner Glenn Adams, who uh, is our Cumberland County Commissioner and has a uh, firm, again, downtown. <laughs> um, you know, he sat with me every time I walk by his window and he's in there, he'll wave me in. <laughs> And he just wants to hear, again, at the time, you know, how my law school, uh, you know, application process was going. Um, and and I, I guess, again, I can go keep going on. Again, uh, Ms. Sherry Miller, who gave me the internship, essential graduate. You know, I mean, like, um, we're, we're out here and, and I've been, not only did I already know this, but then it's been proven time and time again, this example of like, you know, we don't just, oh, you went there. Okay, cool. Good to see you. You know, it's, it's, it's like, now what can I do for you? Now, how can we, you know, connect and, and kind of hold you um, you know, you know, bring you under the wing, as they say, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and so that that kind of um, consistent sort of um, mentorship that, that has come is something that I definitely look forward to one day doing again, um, you know, uh, for, for future students. Yeah. Hey, Matoya. Did <laughs> you see that? <laughs> yes, I, I always tell that story. I mean, you have no idea. It, it, what, what is more pure than knowing that our, our Judge King was just like there, <laughs> you know, doing just the classic Bible stories for us kids. Like, you know, she was having to lead us in our little hymn songs and everything. Like, right, right. <laughs> it was great. Uh, let me see. Oh, and Jay, I guess I'm seeing another question here. Dr. B, I'm really sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry that I'm missing you. Oh, that's uh, okay. But this message thing is working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jay, your daughter volunteered uh, with uh, FCCYC. Amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, OK, OK. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. The fact that your daughter you know, did FCCYC, that should be something she very much puts uh, front and center in her applications. I mean, um, I think the more, um, especially if she's interested in Central um, or just North Carolina schools in general, uh, I think it's true. Like, we don't just want attorneys. We don't just want another uh, person who um, is just going to kind of just be, you know, uh, I think this this field um, for me anyways, and from my experience, uh, is all about what else can you do outside of just, you know, submitting the paperwork, or let's be honest, a lot of times, you know, the work that you're doing is so socially impactful, you know, uh, the people you're, you're advocating for, the people who uh, need access to this kind of help and would never get it and would probably have their lives upended if, if they didn't have, or let's be honest, many people are, lives are upended because they don't have access to a good attorney. Um, so these are the kinds of things that, um, you know, it's, it's hard to articulate sometimes, or it's hard, it's, it's tough to think about, um, uh, but it matters so much to not just want to clock in and clock out as an attorney. I mean, what else can you do? Um, recognizing how powerful it is to be able to guide and, and, and advocate for people, um, who are sometimes probably the most vulnerable points in their lives. Uh, and, and so if Jay is already thinking that way, obviously she is because she's participating in things like the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council. Like, you know, most kids, you know, obviously are <laughs> just on TikTok or whatever they're doing. I don't know. You know, <laughs> well, you can still do that, too. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's like the fact that she's spending some time uh, right. getting involved like that says so much about, you know, her priorities and the fact that she's got already a good direction. I'm sure she gets it from her mom. So <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Um, Oh, Matoya, I hear you, girl. Uh, any advice for adults considering part-time law school after being out of uh, school for years? Yes, 100,000%. Once again, the North Carolina Central School of Law, we actually do have uh, part-time night classes. And I mean, I, I promise you some of the smartest students, um, the most like, and then they tell me like where they're going once they graduate and, you know, <laughs> there, I, I know some, you know, night students that have got some pretty big things that are going to be happening for them. Um, so it's really all about, you know, it's doable, you know, I mean, these, these people have little nine to fives, have kids, and then are spending, um, you know, two to three hours from, um, you know, whether it's an eight o'clock class or a 630 to eight o'clock class, eight o'clock to nine o'clock class. Um, it's doable. It's a little longer, you know, uh, you go from, um, you know, three years is typical. You'll do four, um, in order to do a night school program, um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it can be incredibly rewarding. Um, and, and of course, again, over time, you know, you can do a couple of years of night. And then if you decide you want to quicken the pace, you can go to day, 
you can shift to the day school. So there, there's opportunities like that, but it is doable. I think the main thing to think about is um, certainly the financial costs. I think that's ultimately uh, another just kind of side of law school. That is something to think about. Um, you know, Central obviously is incredibly competitive, um, but, you know, we are still talking, you know, 20 grand a semester, you know, more or less. Um, and again, that's factoring in, you know, some housing costs and some other things. Obviously you can't work exactly. Um, so, you know, you're kind of, you know, kind of supplementing that. But again, if you're doing night school, it's a little bit different. Um, you would work in that sense. Um, but, but just, you know, knowing, knowing that you're doing this for a very specific reason uh, and you have a plan, um, it's, it's totally viable. And I think, um, you know, Matoya, Talk to me. Call, call me later. We can talk about this. Like, I mean, I was, could you imagine if, if someone like Matoya was also, you know, wielding a JD like a weapon? Yeah, this is that would be amazing. Yeah. So here, here we go. We're networking again. Uh, do I know what summer internship I'll apply for? Um, you know, I think this is. <laughs> I think we tried to avoid it, but obviously, here comes COVID. <laughs> um, yeah. There's some. There is some um, issue, I think, with, um, you know, just the uncertainty with, um, can I go to a law office this summer? You know, the, just, just um, there, there's a little bit of uncertainty right now with how much you can do um, because of how much is currently closed. Um, and so certainly, you know, law firms are exempted as far as being, you know, professional services that, that, that are allowed to operate. Nevertheless, I think um, because it's just, um, you know, Chief Justice Beasley has kind of, you know, changed, the, you know, what cases are going through. And there's just a lot going on that, unfortunately, it is having an impact on some of our students' abilities to get good internships. Um, I've decided personally, uh, I'm still going to get one. Uh, I'm still working on a few. Um, but um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some summer classes just because, again, um, the ability to do much over Zoom <laughs> is, is limited. Um, and so, and I, and I was honestly kind of benefited from my five months with uh, Miller and Illikainen beforehand. So I've kind of uh, received my personal thing. That's, this is all just me thing, you know, <laughs> I think it is not applicable to many other people, but um, you know, in, for, for me, yeah, I think I'm gonna be leaning on that and I'm still trying to uh, establish something for the second half of the summer. Um, but for my first half, I'm just gonna try and knock out some classes ahead of time. I mean, I don't know if that means I'm graduating early or if it means I can take more interesting classes later on that are more elective uh, related. Um, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I know, Matoya, I'm, I'm, you should have heard me talking about Kaplan and all these other uh, people earlier. I know. <laughs> no, that's, that's all networking. I mean, um, this, this is a completely unsolicited plug, but it's, it, it, it definitely um, is a relevant one. Um, I got a Dr. B in my process of going to law school. Like I, you know, Dr. B obviously is, is, you know, for the high school folks, um, you know, heading to college um, and knowing Dr. B and knowing how impactful she was to her students to be able to get into the colleges of their dreams. Um, you know, I found, you know, the law school equivalent, if you will, of Dr. B. Okay. No one is right. going to be as, you know, amazing right. and as capable as Dr. B, but you know. Uh, the next best thing. Um, so they, they do have um, college consultants, obviously law school consultants in this case. Um, and so, you know, if we're talking about plugs, um, that's something else to think about. I think that, you know, it's not necessarily um, like a requirement by any means when it comes to uh, for, for some students. But I mean, when it comes to, again, wanting to do everything you can to be able to get exactly to where you want to be, because, again, you have a plan, you have a, a goal in mind. Um, and instead of guessing, <laughs> you know, uh, those random acts of college decision making, as Dr. B uh, calls it, I'm probably misquoting you, but I know it's, it's a good line and I love it. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's so true. It's so true. It's, it's just as true for law school. You don't want to necessarily be going in blind. Um, and there's books, but there's something about somebody who knew you and, you know, can hear exactly what you need and then respond it's literally to you. Um, so I did that for, for my uh, law school thing. And then obviously, I think that's why Dr. B's work is so important. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I mean, I'm sure they're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Starts in kindergarten again. Dr. Yep. B. Yep. See my, see my sign just the gospel of Dr. B. I mean, all these, all these, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, Dr. B, you have no idea how often I quote you um, here and there. I, I'm, I'm always, I'm always, you know, attributing correctly, you know, Dr. Wilkerson, Dr. <laughs> Wilkerson, favor of Carolina said. <laughs> Let's see. 
Let me see. So, folks, what's going on here is Mario can't hear me because he's having a technical issue on the other side. So, we're so I'm typing questions to him on Messenger. So, if you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the chat box. Yeah, thanks again, Dr. B, for everything. Um, this is really fun to talk about, um, and I really appreciate um, you know the folks that were able to kind of chime in and. Um, ask, um, you know, uh, their questions and I'm very much available. Um, you know, if anyone else has any more questions, you know, as much as I can. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you know, Mari be on Facebook. It's, it's definitely an easy way uh, to do that. Um, and I think, you know, getting, deciding to go to law school for me, uh, had everything to do with, you know, uh, it was a dream for sure. You know, I was little, you know, I think I always thought about it. Um, but, it didn't really become something I had to do until I found those reasons why. Um, like, it's nice to be able to say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a, and, and that's fine. It's, it, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's definitely where it starts. But I think what turns that from just something you say to something you do, um, surprisingly enough, was after you kind of already start doing it. Um, not literally practicing law, you know, that's legal, but, you know, getting involved with the community, trying to make a change, and then maybe finding yourself saying, hey, and if I just had that one more um, thing, to then take my uh, ability to help these folks or help uh, the situation, um, and that's what I'm missing. All of a sudden, you have all the motivation in the world, and you have, you know, there's there's no way you're not going to succeed because you basically found exactly why you're doing it. Um, so that's what I would encourage people to do. It's not an easy thing to find out, and it certainly takes a lot of effort as far as you know trying things out, going to places, getting engaged, getting involved. Um, and through that process, I think you know you'll definitely find that drive. And then again law school um, or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's just a matter of when, not if. Okay. All right. So I'm going to close it out here. Even though I, so folks, like I said, Mario can't hear me, but so I'm typing to him. I think I'm getting good at reading lips though. I, I, I definitely okay. got exactly what you just said. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. Chris, I see you, bro. No, I'm sorry. That's my voice from uh, fellow Golden Bull, man. So, Chris. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Chris, I mean, and, and do you have a question for Mario? <laughs> Chris is great, man. Um, okay. I love seeing all my good friends from high school just like, I mean, this is cheesy, but I, <laughs> I, I will Facebook stalk my good friends and like just see all the awesome things that they're doing. And Chris is definitely one of them. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's great. So Mario, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And as, as he said, if you have any questions, you can certainly contact him. Okay. So folks, we're going to sign off. Let me just Type this in here. Okay, so we are going to sign off now. Oh, okay. Um, wait a minute. Did you see Tony King? Read the message. No, read the message. Oh. Love Judge King. <laughs> I don't know if I'm still on or not. <laughs> yes, you are still on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're still on. <laughs> So read, read, read the message on the um, chat. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. You, well, thank you again, Dr. B. Okay. Thank you so much, Mario. I really appreciate you doing this. And everyone that tuned in, thank you so much. Um, this was so helpful. Um, Mario has signed off. We were He was having some technical difficulty. But I thank you, everyone that um, joined in. And if you know of a young person who is interested in attending law school, uh, Mario is definitely willing to speak to them because you know he's, he's in the middle of it now and he's a great guy to speak with. And I just thank everyone out there. You know, the people were talking, you know, he was putting in a lot of plugs, but these are all the people that poured into him so that he could get to where he is um, today. So I thank all those people that are out there pouring into people and continuing to mentor the young folks in our community 
and the not so young folks in our community. Uh, it, it's what we need. You know, every everyone needs a champion in their um, in, in in their backyard. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. And please, please share this with folks that are interested in law school or people who are just trying to think about what is it they want to do in the next step in their career. Jay, thank you so much, darling. You are always like so, so great at being here at, at every meeting. Um, yes, she'll, your daughter will be able to see this later. This will this stays live on my um, Facebook page, Steps to the Future, under video. So all the Facebook lives will be there and um, you'll be able to see that. So again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, come uh, tune in next week. So next week I get to have one of my God, one of my great friends, my, my twin, I call her. You probably, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you've seen me refer to her as my twin. And we're going to talk about um, what it is to be an independent educational consultant because there isn't a degree where you go to college to become an independent educational consist, uh, consultant, but there is definitely pathways to get there. So we're going to both talk about our journeys and kind of interview each other about it. So tune in next week and we will see you then. Take care, everyone.